Welcome to Thinking Particle 6 Subscription Drop 1. In this video we will talk about new features we have integrated into Subscription Drop 1. A new operator is our value to value operator. We will show you in this video how we created an effect like this and how we can make it interactive in real time in the 3D Studio Max viewport. Here we have an array of particles and these particles respond to this upper point object. Wherever I move this upper point, the particle size changes. This is done with our new operator. Let me show you how we created this effect. First we have this array of particles. The first dynamic set uses a position born to create this effect. The position born uses the pistol shot feature. And the pistol shot feature creates an amount of particles in one go. We use an object for that, a plane, a simple plane object. We take the number of vertices from this plane object and feed the number of vertices into our shot parameter. So that actually defines how many particles we create based on the plane object. What we want to achieve here is that each of the vertices in our plane object defines where a particle lands. We do that with the surface position operator, which places for every vertex a particle. And we set the position with the particle data. The shape of the particle is defined with the standard shape operator and we use a sphere. So this is our first dynamic set and it creates this regular grid of particles based on the size of our plane object. The second dynamic set is a very interesting one. It is called only one time at the beginning, so we do this operation only one time. And what we do is we take our position helper and we do a particle search. So what we want to do is we want to find the, the largest distance or the biggest distance to this point helper. So we are researching all particles and find the value that's the highest one. And we store this in a data channel. This next dynamic set is doing all this magic we have seen in the beginning of this video. We are using our new value to value operator, which is a curve control and it gives you really great powerful control. What it does, it takes an input value and it matches this value to an output value or to be more precise the input value will be matched to this curve which is always between 0 and 1. And with several controls we can uh, decide in which bracket the input value should fall to create an output value. So it's kind of changing the input to conform to a specific output and the curve will let us control how these changes happen. So what we want to achieve is actually control the size of the particles. We do that by using the point helper position, the position of the particle, and this gives us a distance. And this distance value is fed into our value to value operator. So we are going to work with this distance we measure to the point helper. The other value we have is we want to define our maximum allowed value for distance and we measure that in our dynamic set we did before. So we feed that in to the input of the maximum value. Our minimum size should be 1 because we want to see the smallest particle as well. So we set the minimum output value to 1. Now we want to control the maximum size of our spheres as well. And this is set to 15. So we feed this float helper into the output maximum value and we set it to 15. Our other control is the age relative, which always runs between 0 and 1. And we feed that into phase. The phase allows us to animate this curve control. Let's have a look at uh, how this works. As we can see in the center, we have our point helper object. When we adjust the curve now, we can control based on the input, 
how the actual size output value should be changing. All the scaling effects we see here are based on the position of the point helper. We did this dynamic set where we measure the position of the point helper to the particles. So if we were to move around this point helper, we will get different sizes, all based on our dynamic set. And the particles that are further away will be smaller, and also particles closer to the point will be smaller. It's exactly what we do with the curve control. There's also other controls we can use here. For example, the scale. The scale is actually a multiplier of this curve. How often should this be repeated? So if we put the scale to two, it will be repeated two times. Or three, the curve will be repeated three times. And everything else still works. So that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of procedural, fully procedural modeling in things. Particles. No keyframes needed, the system will always work because it's based on rules. We also have controls for out of range, so if the value falls not into the min and max values, then we can loop the curve or repeat the curve or choose some other functions. The phase allows us to animate the effect or the curve control. Right now we just fed in the age, the particle age. So with uh, increasing age, the particles will automatically animate the phase of the curve control. It's that simple. The new curve control we have created is a really powerful addition to a Thinking Particle 6 and it's free for Thinking Particle 6 subscription users. It's part of our subscription drop one. I hope you enjoyed this video and check out our other videos as well.